It's a long way from the islands of Fiji, but today the political tensions there are washing ashore in the western suburbs of Sydney. We are coming in. Fiji's unelected Prime Minister, previously banned from visiting Australia, is coming to garner support, and he comes with the familiar trappings of a military ruler. Private muscle, police on hand, a ban on media. We have been invited as international media to And a hand-picked crowd. This is a bloody, bloody thing. We're happy. We are coming in. Let's walk the crowd. At the beginning of this year, Varek Frank Bainimarama renounced his military role. Now I'm allowed to come back into Australia. Called an election. Yes, I was not allowed to. And is now entering it at the head of a brand new party, Fiji First. I'm interested in how you will make the transition to democracy. For eight years, Frank Bainimarama has ground the judiciary and media into total submission and demolished his political opponents with his typical forthright style. You don't know? Are you really that ignorant? You don't know? And yet, to the utter surprise of many international observers, but are you really that ignorant? You don't know why Frank Bainimarama is possibly on his way to a convincing electoral victory. We have a constitution to run with. And this little blue book, his new constitution, is likely to be the key to his success. All Fijians for the first time in their history. Mm. It's offering something that no previous Fijian government ever has the abolition of race in the electoral and government system. One vote, one value. Many in this crowd will no longer be branded as Indo-Fijians. Their title and status now is simply Fijian. And that is buying a lot of support for the strongman of the Pacific. The biggest losers in the changes are the traditional chiefs who enjoyed a kind of upper house role in politics, now it's not a role now abolished. Great Council of Chiefs, why have you taken away the Great Council of Chiefs? I have been indigenous in Fiji. The lady that brought me up is and why did you take that away from us? The indigenous has given Fiji one of the best documents Fiji can ever make. Yeah. It's Sunday in the village of Nyililili, across the river delta on the outskirts of Suva. It's the home turf of the woman with the best chance of stopping Frank Bainimarama. Rotemumu Kepa is virtual royalty in Fiji. A hereditary chief, one of just three supreme chiefs in Fiji, and now the leader of the main opposition party. He likes his uniforms, uh, you know, he shows this macho macho kind of character. They're uh, reinventing him or remoulding him into this uh, other persona. The, the father figure. That's uh, right, yeah. with little children. The dominant pro-government media are predicting, if they mention her at all, that she's heading for a resounding defeat to Bainimarama. Maybe that's what he thinks, you think, yes. You think he's still in for a surprise? He's in for a big surprise. Yeah. Because the paper, I mean, he, largely the papers that support him have been claiming 80% uh, for, uh, for Bonimarama. Mm. You don't think it's going to turn out like that? You will ask them where they've been going. Those people are not going out to the rural uh, areas yeah. or peri-urban to ask them what their opinion is. And secondly, there's still this fear factor. You can't take it away. Yes. You know, if you're going to ask me, you know, who do you support? Yes. I look at you and I think, oh, I better say Fiji give, first. Give the right answer. Yeah. yeah. So I will say to you, Fiji first. With little media coverage, Rote Mumu and her Social Democrat Party, Sedelpa, have been solidly building a grassroots campaign in churches and small villages across the country over the past six months. And it may yet deliver a surprise result. 
I think with a, with a media degree, it makes it very difficult for us to give our side of the story, which means that for them to hear our side of the story, we'd have to physically go out and, uh, and uh, speak to them. But most people, because they've seen bullying, you know, his bullying tactics, others who have been, um, who have been persecuted and tortured, those who have lost their jobs, they have no, no place for any redress. So there's still very much that fear factor. Well, it was certainly a man to be frightened of during the coup, but he does seem to have changed. He's a dictator, but he's popular. How do you explain that? We mustn't uh, forget the fact that the person who is now showing himself to be uh, very much a father figure is the same guy that walked down the streets with uh, 600 men behind him yeah. and uh, showing people that, uh, you know, if, you, if you're not careful, yeah. you know, me and these guys behind me, we'll you know, are here. Chiefs, soldiers and coups have been the dominant features of Fiji since 1987 after the first indigenous and military uprising against what was seen as a government that was too sympathetic to the Indian population of Fiji. Then in 2000, the government of Mahendra Chowdhury, the first prime minister of Indian ethnicity, was deposed. Chowdhury and his government were held hostage for 56 days while Indo-Fijians, then almost half the population, were viciously attacked in the remote rural areas. And the Fijian people take the knife and chase the dead son. And three days, three, three days we stay in the bush. Houses were burnt, businesses looted, men beaten and women raped. Many of those whose homes survived were given just 30 days to vacate farms where their families had been for a century. All double B. Pretty solid. Yeah, pretty solid. Because I was trying to fight with the hurricane, but I never thought about this. Then. It was into this environment that Commodore Frank Bainimarama entered the national stage. As army commander, he arrested the coup makers and restored a civilian government. But six years later, in 2006, the government proved to his unliking. He seized power for himself and has held it ever since. As of six o'clock this evening, the military has taken over the government, has executive authority and the running of this country. Unrepentant to international condemnation and scornful of persistent demands that he called an election. Dictatorship, dictatorship is in what? What am I doing that... Uh, you've suspended the constitution, you've sacked the judges, uh, you've seized power... Uh, I sacked the judges? Who, who, where did you get the brief that I sacked the judges? Well, let's get no, no, let's, let's get one thing right. The they constitution's were not, gone. They were not the only thing that were removed. Yeah. When, uh, uh, Everything was removed exactly. except, except your you power. Right? Everything was removed except your power. Since he seized power, he's had one constant confidant and advisor. Attorney General Ayaz Sayed Kaum, a legal expert who crafted most of the PM's constitutional manoeuvres since 2006. Many in Fiji see Kaum as the true power behind the throne. As well as Attorney General, he's also Minister for Justice, Minister for Tourism, Communications, Trade, Elections, etc., etc., 12 ministries in all. You've thrown away a lot of conventions and you've probably created a lot of uh, enemies. Is it uh, worth it for, for what you, you think you're trying to achieve? But I don't understand your question. What do you mean? Like, you mean building roads, we've created enemies, or electricity, or water? No, uh, arresting people, uh, isolating people, careers have uh, ended. Uh, anyone who's been seen to be an enemy of uh, Bani Marama is finished. I disagree with that. I disagree with that. I don't think there has been that kind of you know, victimization or enemy of Bani Marama per se. Of course, our ability to have a good pool of people uh, to choose from was very limited by Australia and New Zealand because of travel bans, and yeah. indeed at USA at one stage. Yeah, but you took it, you brought on, you brought on a lot of it yourself. I mean, uh, you know, the, the sort of the attacks on the judiciary and the magistrates. Uh, See, again, that's an unfounded statement. There's no attack on the judiciary. Well, you wiped them out. I mean, anyway. No, we didn't. Like his boss, Kayum, won't wear the dictator tag lightly. No, that's completely false. Yeah. 
despite ruling by decree for eight years and overseeing an exodus of judges, lawyers and news editors. Well, no, you see, I think, again, uh, I don't agree with the fact that uh, the media is uh, not free. It's a privilege to see you here today, and I firmly believe and strongly have faith in unity, and I know this is what this party is all about. So, yeah. Whatever criticisms there are about the laws he's created in Fiji... We must all think as Fijians. Undoubtedly, his proudest achievement is in crafting the new colourblind constitution. If you're going to have political parties that are going to contest elections based on religion, ethnicity, denomination, how will they be as a government? How the abolition of racial distinctions in parliamentary seats, in government jobs, scholarships and housing has shaken the cornerstones of Fijian politics. Do you say, yeah, I want to know what race the CEO is? I want to know what race the chairman is? No. Drawing Indians away from their traditional parties, as well as many urban indigenous Fijians. You want water in the tap. Kayum, an Australian educated lawyer, has imported multiculturalism into the laws of Fijian politics. You want the best person to do the right job and it may prove to be his most valuable contribution to the ongoing rule of Bani Marama. I've got to say, it feels like an irony uh, to me, this, uh, this government, which is ruled by decree, came in with the military, and yet it's kind of got this democratic uh, flower that it's trying to present to uh, the people. Uh, no other party's ever done this before. Uh, no, not at all. The type of analysis you have is perhaps the type of misunderstanding a lot of uh, foreigners and indeed some of the other politicians have. It is a bit of a paradox. It's a paradox. It is a, there's no other party here saying or they presented we want uh, equality between races. Yeah, no, no other party or certainly delivered it. Yeah, exactly. And I think in but Kayum's enthusiasm for multiculturalism is not shared by all across the land. <laughs> In the village of Drabuta, followers are coming to pay their respects to Rotemumu Kepa. The conventions that are followed here are much older than any parliamentary constitution. <laughs> Undoubtedly, Rotemumu can rely on the political support of a good number of her subjects. <laughs> Indigenous voters now make up two-thirds of the electorate. How loyal they will be to Rotemumu is the wild card of the election. But part of Sedelpa's message, the attack on Kayum and his constitution, is starting to bite. <laughs> Kayum's constitution is being analysed line by line by Sedelpa candidate Samesa Karavati. Dozens of roadshows like this are unfolding in villages across the country with a central message that has long resonated here. They said to us, you know, when you talked about the word Fijian, I mean, it's, it's, in a way, from many perspectives, it's quite superfluous. In a country like Australia, we don't have a debate about whether one should be called an Australian or not. This is a controversy. This is yeah. a big controversy. This yeah. one, eh? So, um, the, the, the point is that you're, if you're born in France, you're French, mm. period. On a personal level, how do you feel? that if you pass a law that says you can be called a Fijian, what were you called before? Well, that's precisely the point. I mean, it's quite silly. In fact, uh, I don't know whether you know or not, but uh, when you uh, fill out the immigration card, if you left your country and we entered your country, it says, if, if Fiji's citizen fill out race, 
We have to do that all the time. Mm. She constantly reminded of that. It's, it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite uh, in, in a way, quite tragic. The constitution probably is a threat to chiefly power, is a possible threat to indigenous land, and to this crowd, its secular nature is a threat to God himself. It's hard to see what Rote Mumu makes of the discussion here. As is appropriate for a chief in a village setting, others do most of the talking, but undoubtedly some of it would resonate with her. How do you view the, uh, the non-Indigenous uh, population uh, in Fiji? You know, that is a very interesting question because I have been labelled by certain people as racist. Mm. Now, from my position, we look at uh, indigenous as being the first people that arrived uh, uh, in this land, and as such, they have certain rights and uh, privileges. But that doesn't mean that it overrides any other rights and privileges of any other group. This is what makes Fiji. Of course, yeah? it makes it a this great it makes it a great Fiji. country, but it's also made it a very um, a dark country at times, like during the first coups. You know, the position of the Indians was horrifying, and that came through some of your fellow chiefs. Do you regret those times? I, I regret some of the things that happened uh, at that time. You know, uh, you know, in hindsight, you can say, you know, we would have done this differently. Or, you know, if if I had been there, I would have done mm. things different. But it happened. And those are some of the things that you have to learn from, that it doesn't help anybody in any way. It doesn't help the indigenous, it doesn't help any other group. Part of the problem with the constitution is that it dropped almost from the sky. No vote, no discussion, no consensus. Unsurprisingly, it's being torn apart in villages like this, where the bulk of the electorate live on the eve of the election. Just take it to the people. Take it to the people and see what the people think. You can't make any unilateral uh, decision thinking that you know best. Yes. And there are, you know, hundreds of thousands of people out there that have their own opinion as to how they want this country to be. Bainimarama's iron rule has undoubtedly provided security to the Indian community and he brings an alluring promise of racial equality. But it's yet to be seen whether he can smash their old loyalties to their own ethnic parties, essential if he's to win. Ominously, some of the Indian parties have begun to resist the One Fiji message. Indo-Fijian. You, li you, you like uh, uh, Indo-Fijian, do you? Indo-Fijian, yeah. Ah. You don't want a na one national uh, name. You <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep, keep, keep the Indian, OK. But most are enthusiastically embracing the concept. Are you comfortable to be called Fijian? Yes, yes, because, yes in because in we Fiji are... we should be called Fijian, because we are yeah. in, staying in Fiji. Yeah. Yeah. Fiji, we are Fijian. Yeah. Fijian. Born in Fiji. Fiji, so we have got the right to say Fijian. Uh, I'm, I'm of this nation, yeah? Yes, our so nation. What do you think, to be called Fijian, do you like, do you like it? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Pre-polling has begun in remote, mostly indigenous villages, and these are the hardest places to judge whether they'll vote for Bainimarama. It would be impolite to publicly oppose Rotamumu's party here. But Fiji First needs about a third of them to do just that in the privacy of a ballot box. The big end of town, indigenous, Indian and all in between, seem firmly in Bainimarama's camp. I've said in the last couple of days that I've been very disappointed that some of the forces who are responsible for much of the trauma we suffered in 1987 and again in 2000 have re-emerged from the shadows in this election campaign. Roads are being built, hotels are back in the black and the first skyscrapers are appearing on the Suva skyline. Bani Marama is not giving any interviews to foreign media in this campaign. He holds his antagonisms deeply, almost as deeply as his conviction that he has saved Fiji from catastrophe. 
You've been judged harshly internationally, but do you think you've got enough credit for the things you've tried to bring in in this constitution? Yes, I think we have. Yeah. My government has done it, and we really intend to carry it forward with Fiji First. One way or another, an year is coming to an end. How will you be judged, do you think? Look at this. This is how I'm going to be judged. <laughs> Any regrets? And, and Any uh, regrets? None. None. Tomorrow will tell whether he becomes what he's most wanted for eight years, to be the undisputed and totally legitimate ruler of Fiji.